Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at how to install the Intel chipset drivers on Windows 10. Keep watching to find out more. So there are many reasons why you may want to install your chipset drivers, and possibly you're running your system and you don't even know you haven't got them installed, or potentially you've just got the, uh, the basic ones which work, but aren't as good as they could be and potentially you could be adding instability and leaving performance left on the table so let's remedy that right away let's go to the computer and i'll show you my latest windows 10 installation which has no drivers installed and will give you some idea of performance so first of all here is the windows desktop so again windows 10 this is a fresh installation literally done today and currently if we go into device manager you can do that by right clicking on start and choose device manager it brings up this and you can see we've got some devices here which are not fully installed PCI device, PTI device, SM bus controller, and an unknown device. I have actually installed the Aurora software, the uh, Armory Crate, which is part of this ASUS motherboard, and it hasn't installed it from there either. Now, potentially you can install it that way. What I'm gonna show you first of all is the performance that we've actually got from this processor in a Cinebench run. So I've just taken a screenshot of this from a little bit earlier. Uh, if I make that bigger, you can just about see it. So our score there was 8,466. So we're actually trailing quite far behind the Ryzen 7 1700X, whereas in reality this processor should be almost at the same level as the Core i9 9880H CPU, somewhere in around the sort of 9050 points is what we would be expecting to see from this. So we're losing out best part of 500 to 600 points on our Cinebench run, so obviously that is hurting performance. Temperature wise, no problems there, everything seems okay, and surprisingly the system is uh, actually relatively stable, or at least it seems so at the moment. So how do you install your chipset drivers? Now, there's various ways you can do it. You can, if you've got an ASUS motherboard, you can go over into Armory Crate, and this is the same for MSI and a lot of other boards. So you can go into the tool section and look for drivers, and it'll tell you which ones you actually need. Sometimes that might be a better way of doing it. Certainly if you're on Windows 11, you may find this beneficial as the Intel drivers for Windows 11 aren't really stable or released in a lot of places or don't work correctly. So yep, you can do if you want to, just click on download and install. So by far the easiest way of getting the drivers installed is I wouldn't even bother going to Intel's website. If you don't have a DVD-ROM to install the motherboard drivers off the disk that came in the box, then yeah, the easiest way is to go to HTTP S colon forward slash forward slash w dot snappy dash driver dash installer dot org and once you do that press enter make sure you go to this site don't go to any others because there's malware and all kinds of rubbish that you don't want and this will take you to here so snappy driver installer origin by glenn delahoy so click on download now and you've got the options, so you can have the application only, the driver packs as well via torrent. The driver packs are huge, like 10 gigs or more, so yeah, you don't necessarily need that. So I would just go with application only. And if we go to open file, we'll extract that folder. Go into the folder itself, and then we can just start it up. So you can use either the regular 32-bit, or you can use the 64-bit. So I'm gonna go with the 64-bit. It says Windows protected your PC, don't worry about it, it's fine, just click run anyway. And this will help you install the Snappy Driver Installer Origin. And you have to accept their terms and conditions, and you will need to give it access to the internet, because it needs to search for your drivers. This is the section where people get confused. So you've got download all driver packs, you don't want to do that because it's huge. If you're a IT professional and you want to keep all of these somewhere so you can actually go anywhere and just install stuff on the fly, feel free to do it. Network drivers is essentially the same as the, the all packs, but it's network drivers only. And the one we want is download indexes only. So this will index the PC, then tell you what drivers you need. So this is a much, much quicker way of doing it. So click on download indexes only. So first of all, you get the message saying that it can't find it because it doesn't exist. Once it's downloaded the installers or the indexers in the back, then it'll go through and show you what is actually available. So there's a ton of stuff here, which if you have a quick scan through, host controllers, wireless Bluetooth, management engine, NVIDIA USB type C port policy controller. So yeah, there's quite a few drivers actually, which are 
outdated bizarrely and it's also not only has it picked up our chipset it's also picked up other components which are connected such as mice keyboard etc etc so i'm just going to go ahead and choose select all and then i'm going to hit install so now it's going to download the drivers in the background and basically go through and do what it needs to do so i'm going to let it do that should be a few minutes and then we'll come back when it's all done so now all the updates have been downloaded onto the system and it's creating a restore point. And as you can see, if you keep an eye on the screen, you can see the uh, the bars move along as it goes. So you know where it is and you can tell if it's actually hung or anything like that. And you can see where it says successfully installed, system restart pending. It's just gonna carry on going through and doing what it needs to do. This is actually a really, really good application. And you probably just noticed there that the screen's gone blank a couple of times as it is installing the chipset drivers, which is completely normal to be expected. So if your screen does flicker on and off now and then, don't worry, it's absolutely fine. And as you can see, we're getting all sorts of messages popping up saying that a restart is required, etc., etc. Again, just let it go on and do its thing. It will give you notifications on the screen of what is going on. And you should end up at the end with uh, a lot of green bars, hopefully no red ones. Anyway, I'm gonna let this carry on and we'll come back at the very end and we'll run a final benchmark and see if we've actually improved our performance. Okay, so we've come to the very end now and it says at the top, you can see we've getting all sorts of messages flashing up. Restart required, yes, we know about this. And at the top here, we've got installation completed, system restart required. Click here to hide installed drivers. So there we go. And there is actually more updates available, but we can do now is actually go to device manager and yeah we can see that our devices that did have exclamation marks by them that is all gone now so that is really good news so again updates are available we can go ahead and redo those but i think that's absolutely fine for now so we can close down all these windows and we'll do a quick restart and then we'll do a cinebench run and see if things have improved Okay, so we're all done and the drivers are installed with no helps whatsoever from Intel. Thanks guys, very, very helpful. What is it with Intel? Can they not get a unified chipset driver installer package together? You would think being that their R&D department basically spends more money than the entire of AMD's company, you'd think they would be able to do this by now. Surely some way they can do it. I'm really upset about the whole situation. You can probably tell it is not good, but there is a silver lining to this rather Intel looking cloud. And that is the snappy driver installer origin, as we've seen in the video. It made life so much easier. Literally go to the site, install it, check on the indexes, download it, boom, job done. System is behaving much, much better. And we managed to get about an extra 200 points or so from the Cinebench R23 score which I'm still a little bit perturbed by because the exact same system with Windows 11 on actually scores an additional 400 points more than the highest score with Windows 10. Yes, definitely good news for Windows 11. Not so good news because everyone thinks that Windows 11 is slow, but it seems faster for this particular setup. Anyway, I digress. So ultimately it comes down to basically two options. If you've got a CD-ROM drive, go with the... Uh, the DVD installer. If not, then you can head over to the motherboard's manufacturer, so whether it's ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, etc., etc., and download the drivers from there. But if you don't want to do that and you're not sure which ones you actually need, then save yourself all the aggro, go to Snappy Driver Installer Origin, and just, yeah, press a few buttons and it'll do it all for you. Happy days. So, anyway, that is how to install Intel chipset drivers and pretty much any drivers that you want to. If you've got any comments or questions, stick them in the comment section below. In the meantime, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.